Here we are at the Sebring Airport. The show is finally starting to wind down a little bit. We're on the last day of Sebring U.S. Sport Aviation Expo 2019, the 15th running of this show, and we're glad to be back for another one. I've made all 15. I'm going to keep coming. You just keep doing it. I'm Dan Johnson talking with two important people for this show. Mike Willingham, hey, whose Dan. title is Airport Manager, maybe even ex something fancier than that. Executive Director. Executive Director. <laughs> Executive Director. I knew there'd be a nice proper title for you there. And Bev Glarner, and your title is the executive assistant executive assistant so Mike and Bev we're appreciative that you folks have continued to make this show alive and well for the industry the industry depends on these kinds of shows it's very important to us you had good strong week I think how do you feel about it this year Mike I, Dan I think we had a great week we had a, a good roster of exhibitors a good strong showing of participation from people from all over the region the state the country uh, the world for that matter so I think we really had a great solid show how far away do people come to attend the Sebring show? Well, we know Eastern Europe, Western Europe. <laughs> um, That's a long ways. Asia. And, and, and I think we had some folks from Africa here as well. Is that right? Wow. When Lockwood over here to, uh, to your right, um, they've now got a big presence on the field. But at one time, this was kind of a sleepy airport. And then along comes this guy named Mike Willingham, who seemed to change the game. So that was before the show started. But how, how did that all go, some of those early days? Give me a short story on that. Well, you know, we have a, a great board a seven-member board that's been very supportive of our economic development efforts. And we have a great relationship with our city, our county, our state DOT, so and, and the FAA. And we were able to assemble a package of incentives for Phil that we basically built the building, leased the building back to Phil, and made him an offer that he couldn't refuse. And I think now, the I know he looked elsewhere, too. Oh, he, did. He, he did. He did. He, a very he's a very process. deliberate guy. Yes. So if you convinced yes, him, that was something good. He absolutely did. Excellent. Well, you've not only done that, but you've had a number of people that have decided to call this airport home. Have you got any other new tenants you'd like well, to introduce us to? The most recent was an announcement today, or last night, by Duke Propellers. They're in our commercial hangar C2, and they had a reception and open house last night. They did so a bang-up job with that, too. They had quite a display there for yes, everybody, didn't we're they? We're very happy to welcome them to our family. Now you've also, Bev, you've had a lot to do with this particular show. I mean, you were the you were the person, I think, two years ago. But you've continued to play an important role in the event itself. That's so important to people like me and Dave and all the others that come down here. Well, we we try, and yes, sir, I have been involved with it for the past three years. Um, we have a, a new team now, and her name is Janice Rarick, which I'm sure a lot of people have met Janice she made um, the during round. the show. But she is our expo um, coordinator. We want everybody to know that when you come to Sebring, we're going to treat you right. Well, as long as you mention that, let's talk about a, a few of the elements. We don't need to hit every one, but let's talk about a few of the elements. Everybody knows, of course, that we've got a bunch of airplanes on display here. Mm -hmm. That's probably the big draw, I suppose. But I'm looking at the indoor exhibit tent. I'm thinking about the new show center tent and all the forum tents. And I talked to several people that said, look, yeah, I enjoy looking at all the airplanes, but I came here to go to forums. And I went, really? Oh, that's, that's your main motivation? I was actually a little taken aback by that. I thought the airplanes were the main draw, but for some, it's other things and you do a lot of things here right. at this event. Well one of our new points of emphasis is education. Uh -huh. and we think we can make Sebring a mecca for aviation and aerospace education. We think there's a market for that. We think that'll help our bottom line. And uh, so that's something we're going to really concentrate on 2020. Now, does that have something to do with the youth aviation zone, too? Is that a part of that somehow? Absolutely. I think that's an, an outgrowth of that. This next year, it's going to be a regional event. We hope to make it a statewide ah, is that right? at, at okay. some point. And even national, maybe taking franchise the concept. and Because it, it's really a winning uh, combination of getting the teachers together, uh, the, uh, the school administration, the kids, and speakers that can tell a story that these kids can relate to. Like, as an example, Barrington Irving. I mean, what a great story he has. And the Kings we had uh, this week and, and many others that, that I saw these kids, their eyes were glued on those mm, speakers. They're right, excellent. And, and they had great questions. They were totally engaged. And I think if we can make a difference in 5% of those kids' lives, 
I think we've done our job. Beautiful, yeah. 5% would be a great penetration. But, but, I, but... I, I would like Beverly to talk about it because... I may have thought about it, but he, he has helped me put it together <laughs> you for sure. a pretty good team here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, like Mike said, our dream was to have our local kids understand that there are job opportunities back home here after they go out to college or to a trade school and they can come back to Sebring and have a ah. lucrative job. All right, so the first year we had about 500 students. Uh, second year we had about 750 and this year we would have had close to 900. Wow, that's great to pull that many. And you know what, you're right about their future, not only here in Sebring, but any student, any, any a gal or guy that want to go be a pilot now, my goodness, yes. the airline, the corporate flying, yes. they have got, this is almost a sweet spot for them. Yes. And my whole time I've yeah. been in aviation, I've never seen it look this good for a young person. Yeah. So great that you got them out here and go, oh yeah, maybe aviation could work. It's, it's also about non-aeronautical too. We, we've got, we've had some panels recently where we had all of our non-aeronautical tenants come in as a panel, ah, talk okay. to kids. So, which you have quite a few around which, the grounds which, here, which, we notice, we do, yeah. which we do, so, but, so Beth, if we talk a little bit about Sure. making Yaz a year-round event. Yes, actually what, what Mike said is that Yaz is a year-round event. We just started it at Expo. So, so that this was, is the trigger point. Right? Yes. Okay. Like in October we had um, Girls in Aviation Day that was um, uh, with um, WAI and so we had probably I want to say probably 30 to 40 kids come out that Saturday and like Mike mentioned also in November we had a panel of our industries mm -hmm. out here at the airport that came mm -hmm. and talked to probably a group of about 50. Excellent. And then we have this um, for Expo and then we're trying to come up with a, a concept and idea to have a summer camp Oh, really? Like, you know, a week or two that the kids during the summer can ha come out to the airport and maybe get with Lockwood or one of the other um, aircraft manufacturers here and learn the trade. Really good. You know, I, for me, this is all too rare that the airport is not just something that happens in some town somewhere and people are vaguely aware of it, but it never starts anything. It's just kind of there. And it's, somebody flies in an airplane, that's all they know about it. For you to be the center of an activity like this, I think is very good. Yes. Uh, and reaching out, the whole community knows about you better, not mm -hmm. just the rest of us right. all around the world okay. that know about aviation, but your community that surrounds you knows you better. But it goes back to having a great board that lets us experiment, uh -huh. fail, you know, and, and, and resurrect ourselves and do do new and different That's things. That's how we learn, we're so by we're, failing. We're, we're very blessed with a board that, that wants us to do. Has it been the same board for a long time? It, it, a lot of the members have been consistent I'm kind of guessing for, they're probably for consistent with you, right? Huh? Right. And one of the things I'd like to mention for 2020, 2021 is our unmanned aerial system okay. uh, emphasis. We're, we're going to try to bring not just the, the small UASs to the airport, but we want to bring the platforms that will be transporting people, goods, services, uh, those kind of things. Well, so that, I'm thinking the, that connects the dots perfectly with the youth yeah, aviation zone. It, it absolutely does. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of action there from right. what we all can right. see. Yes. So why not? Yeah, You'd be absolutely. one of the first shows to do that, actually. Yeah, we, we want to make sure whatever whatever's new in transportation uh, and, and aviation, we want to be a part of that. Now, I want to mention one other thing that that triggered in my mind, Mike, because I know that uh, either one of you can answer this because you both know it, I'm sure. But <laughs> some of the companies that are coming here, you're, you're drawing some foreigners. you got Technum, an Italian yeah. company. Yeah. you got Duke Propellers, a French company, and I don't know who else. I know there's been some others, uh, Brazilian <laughs> companies, at least in the past. Uh, one of the reasons why they come here is because you have kind of a special opportunity for them here, and I'm talking about the trade-free zone. What does that mean for people that don't know what a trade-free zone means? Well, the foreign trade zone is basically foreign trade foreign zone. Trade That's zone. What it's called. Right, okay. Right. Is basically a, an island within the the U.S. that really is exempt from the commerce of the United States. So, as an example, our fuel farm is activated within our foreign trade zone. So if you come to Sebring by fuel and you fly offshore, Bahamas, uh, Central America, South America, wherever you might go, you don't, you pay little or no federal and state taxes oh, really? on that oh, fuel. That, that was, that's so, a draw too then. So the, the, the same applies to business and industry. What I'm getting out of all of this and what I'm hoping people are aware of, I'm learning and I hope they're learning too, is that Sebring is a lot more than the show they know a right. lot more than this beautiful structure right. behind you. Uh, there's a lot going on mm. here, and it benefits aviation, but it's broader than that even. It's aviation doing good for right. the rest of the world. Yeah, I, I'd say we're a, a platform for economic development. You know, we're a real estate development where the runway is an amenity. 
Bev, uh, you remember the dates for next year now? This will be Sebring 2020, the 16th running. When are you planning to do that? January 22nd through the 25th. And we're going to make it bigger and better than it's ever been. All right. There's one last thing we'd like to touch on here before we part company with you. You have a show center tent here where lots of interesting things happen, and it's it's been called various things over the years, but this year you renamed it, and I thought it was a great tribute. Please tell the viewers what I'm talking about. Well, Dan, the founder of this event was Bob Wood, Robert Wood. Um, the event started really with a kind of a failed attempt by a local um, civic organization to do an event. Bob came to me one day, I remember it very well, probably in 2003, and said, you know, Mike, we, they, they, they wanted to do an annual aviation event. They don't think they can do it. What do you think about, let's try to make this work? And uh, it was totally his idea. It was about the time the light sport aviation regulations were being formed. And uh, his idea was to form the show based on that, the, the FA light sport rule. So we, uh, we did, and I think the rest is history. But without Bob's leadership for many, many, many years. Several years he was yes, the man. Yes, he, 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 was, he was the catalyst There's, and, and the, the drive behind the expo. Without Bob and his wife Barbara, uh, we, would have, we would not be here talking to you today. And the economic development and all the great things that have happened at this airport, Bob is responsible for. So now the show center tent is the Bob Wood Show Center. Indeed it is. And I and think that's so, so fitting. Yes. I, I hope that name lasts for a long time because I think he deserves it. He was a fine man. He's unfortunately no longer with us, but his broad yes. smile will stick yes. with me forever. Yeah, he, that man could beam a smile like nobody's business. Absolutely, he could. A great, man great was guy. very driven to get this done, too. He, he was driven, and he would let nothing stop him. And <laughs> it didn't matter who you were. And we, we were so blessed to, to know Bob. He was a wonderful guy. He was. And he was a kit builder himself. He so was. he was Indeed. one of us as well as a leader. I, I, I flew to Oshkosh in the airplane he built. Is that right? I Perfect. Did. Perfect. Yes, it was great. Well, let's have a website address now uh, for, for people who want to follow up. Let's go with the expo address. Airport is www.sebring-airport.com. Okay, that's and the airport. Is the airport, and the expo is www.sportaviationexpo.com. Okay, there you go, great. Well, all that information and so much about everything that goes on here, as much as I can cover, is also available on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Mike Willingham, Bev Glarner, and myself here at the close of another great Sebring. Thank you. Thank you, Dan.